Hello families and welcome back with a new video. So today we're going to be looking at lesson 6-6 -6, where we are going to solve one step and two step math problems. So in this lesson, uh, they want us to understand that two step word problems can be solved by first identifying and solving a hidden question. The answer to that hidden question is then going to be used to answer the question given in the problem. So if we take a look back in lesson 5-7, students solved one and two step word problems involving addition and subtraction. Now we're going to use that in this lesson um, as students are going to use models and equations to solve one step and two step word problems including a start unknown word problem. And I'll explain exactly what a start unknown means in just a second. So if we take a look at our first word problem here we have some students are in the gym. 13 students leave. Now there are 15 students in the gym. How many students were in the gym to begin with? Now in class, we always call this a three read. The first time we read it is for clarification or for understanding to know what the problem is about. The second time we read it is to read it sentence by sentence and underline and circle important information that we're gonna need. The third time we read it is to solve it. So we've already read it our first time. Now we're gonna go through sentence by sentence, um, one at a time and pull out any important information we need. The first sentence says, some people are in the gym. Now, there aren't any numbers in this sentence, but there is an important keyword in here. This word, some, is very important because it is our unknown. We do not know how many some people are. So in class, I would have students circle that word some and put a question mark above it. Now we're going to move on to the second sentence. 13 students leave. So we're going to know that we definitely need that number 13. So we're going to underline that number 13. Next, it says, now there are 15 students in the gym. We are also going to need the number 15. So we know that some people are in the gym, 13 students leave, and there are 15 students in the gym. I also have students, I test them to see if they can catch any errors that I made. I just made one. 13 students leave. There was an important word we missed in that word problem, which was leave. If we know that 13 people are leaving, we know that they are no longer there and that would normally let us know that we are doing a subtraction problem. So typically if we were to write out our problem, we would have, using what we have, we have something or some minus 13 is going to give us 15. Now that's the way we would typically look at it in the classroom. The reason for underlining and circling things is so that it automatically lays out our problem for us. We have everything we needed to know. We have our question mark, which is here. We have our 13, which is represented here. We have our subtraction sign, which is here. And then we have our 15. And we know that 15 is going to um, be our answer in this format because it says now there are 15. So that lets us know that there are 15. So I would give students the opportunity to go ahead and um, to figure this out, I would tell them that the opposite of addition is subtraction and the opposite of subtraction is addition. So what I would have them do in class is to add these two numbers together to come up with, our, with what our sum is. So if we were to add 13 and 15 together, we should come up with our sum. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what we would do if we were to do that. So I'm going to add 13 plus 15. In the number 13, there is 110. In the number 13, there are three ones. One, two, three. In the number 15, there is 110. In the number 15, there are five ones. One, two, three, four, and five. Since we are adding, we are combining these together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones, and one, two tens. Two tens equals 20, so 20 plus eight equals 28. Now that should be our answer, 28. So we will know that, it says here how many students were in the gym to begin with, we should have an answer of 28. Okay, another way to uh, explain this or another way to solve this I should say is by using that parts unknown. Now this is what I was talking about earlier when I was uh, introduce, introducing the topic. 
Um, this is a part part whole bar graph. This is something new. So this is why I'm making a video because it's a new strategy and something new that we're learning. So essentially what always goes here in the top is your answer. And the numbers here are the numbers that you're working with. Right now, based off of the work we already did, we don't know or we didn't know what our answer was or what they started with in the gym. These numbers here, 13 and 15, the same numbers we used from before, are going to go here. Now, it's exactly what I did on the mat here. I took these two numbers and added them together. So these two numbers, if I add them together, my answer should go here. And no matter which way I do it, 13 again, 110, three ones, 110, five ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two tens equals 20, and my answer is going to be 28. So we can erase that question mark and know that our answer, which goes in that top box, is going to be 28. So I just showed you two different ways to do it. And I tell students in class as well that if they're struggling with using the bar model, they can start off with what they're comfortable with, this here, and then checking it by using the bar model or vice versa. Again, we try to give them strategies so that they can choose whichever one works best for them. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. I'm going to go ahead and erase this really quick. I thought I had my other one written out, but I did not, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. Okay, our second problem, and I'm going to write this one out because, again, I did not have this written out ahead of time, which I thought I did. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and write this out. So this word problem says that Corey buys a box of 96 paper clips. from the store. He uses 34 paper clips How many paper clips does Corey have left? Alrighty. So again, if we take a look at our word problem, I, I kind of read it choppily the first time, so I'm going to read it, or three read. First time, Corey buys a box of 30, I'm sorry, Corey buys a box of 96 paper clips from the store. He uses 34 paper clips. How many paper clips does Corey have left? That is our first read. Now we're going to read it again and pull out important information that we need. Corey buys a box of 96 paper clips from the store. What we need out of there is 96. So we're going to underline the number 96. Next, he uses 34 paper clips. There are two important things we need out of there. Of course, we need our number 34, but we also need that word uses. If you use something, you no longer have it or it's no longer new. So that lets us know that we are subtracting. So I'm going to circle that word uses and write a subtraction sign above it. Lastly, how many paper clips does Corey have left? We're always going to need that how many there. Okay. So I'm going to show you again both ways, just like we did before. If we have, we're going to write out our word problem first. And again, the whole purpose of underlining and lining and circling is to have everything laid out for us. So now we have 96 minus 34, and we need to know how many, which is going to be our equals blank. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. 96 minus 34 equals blank. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there for a second, and then I'm going to come back over to our model that I had before, our part, part, whole model. And we know our answer is always going to go at the top, as I said, with our model. So we know that 96 is going to be our answer. We know 34 is one of our numbers that is going to be our part we need to find the other part. So we know that this is going to be a subtraction problem 
as we just figured out over here as well. So now we are going to do our subtraction problem using our tens and our ones chart. In the number 96, there are nine tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In the number 96, there are six ones, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we are subtracting, so we're not adding anything to it. We are subtracting 34. We're going to start with our tens first. In the number 34, there are three tens, so I'm going to remove three tens, one, two, three. In the number 34, there are four ones. Let me see if I have enough. I do. I have six, so I'm going to subtract the four ones. One, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. I have one, two ones. Two ones equals two. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six tens equals 60. So I know my final answer is going to be 62. And if I did the same thing over here with my subtraction, I would still come up with the answer of 62 because if I added 34 and 62 together I would get um, 96 okay so there are two ways to solve our one and two step word problems I hope this helps as always please feel free to rewind pause start stop as much as you need to um, this is going to be a big one that's going to be in our next test so i highly suggest you go over this as many times as necessary to make sure you get it because these are definitely going to be on our test um, so as always let me know if you have any questions send me a message on dojo um, make sure you're checking our class website and this will be up right now i'm gonna go ahead and upload right now so i will see you in the next video guys okay bye